Thanks for coming today to our virtual simulation lab seminar. Uh, today we have my student, Alexander Mihanjiski. Uh, he is going to give you a uh, lecture telling you how to, uh, telling you a little bit about molecular dynamics, what it is, just the very basics, what you'll need to know, and then how to get started doing simulations with Gromax. Uh, so, hello, everybody. I'm glad to see a lot of people coming today. Uh, pretty much uh, Brian sum, summed up everything which I'm uh, going to present today. I will start with uh, some very brief uh, talk about molecular dynamics in general and uh, afterwards I'm going to talk uh, about Gromax. This is the simulation package that uh, I'm using mostly and uh, also I'm going to make a little example so you can find uh, like the commands and uh, like the flow how the, the example should proceed uh, on the, hand, the pages that I have uh, put next to, yeah, to you. So first uh, about uh, molecular dynamics, what it is. Uh, generally, the molecular dynamics we are uh, solving uh, Newton's equations of motions for a molecular system. This is uh, the basic idea of, uh, of uh, MD. So we know from the Newton's second law that uh, the forces are given by the masses times the acceleration. <coughs> so we are, uh, <coughs> we are after uh, having, uh <coughs> uh, we want uh, to know where our molecules, our atoms are. Uh, molecules are going to be on the next instant uh, of time. So we uh, want to calculate the acceleration. We know the masses and we have also to calculate uh, the forces uh, from the Newton's second law. We know that the forces are given by the, gra the negative gradient of the potential energy. So this is a very important equation that uh, we need to emphasize and uh, after running uh, MD simulation, we end up uh, with a trajectory in a phase space, uh, phase space trajectory, which is uh, basically a, a trajectory in the space of uh, coordinates and uh, momentum. And uh, we can analyze uh, this uh, trajectory and to calculate a lot of uh, different properties for our system that we are studying and that we want to know. So MD also serve, uh, can serve uh, as a bridge between the micro and uh, macroscopic uh, <coughs> world. <laughs> so we can, we can calculate uh, phase diagrams, for example. We can derive a structure from uh, our trajectories and uh, dynamical properties. <coughs> and uh, we also can uh, have uh, some, br uh, some bridge uh, between the theory and uh, the experiment. And it is also a good idea to describe one phenomena from going from both ends, from the macro from the experiments and going from bottom to top doing uh, molecular simulations, if it's possible, of course. Uh, I should mention a few things first. The first thing is a force field. What it is a force field, maybe the first thing that comes in mind when you hear force field is the invisible shields uh, around you when you looking uh, into the movies uh, where, which protect our, our heroes uh, and everything. But unfortunately I have to disappoint you and uh, to say that the force field is just basically a set of functions, set of mathematical functions uh, that uh, are describing the interactions uh, between the atoms and uh, the interactions uh, in the molecule and between the molecules. Uh, so basically we have, uh, we have uh, four terms here in uh, our force field. This is the force field, this is the potential. The potential energy is given as uh, the sum of uh, contributions of all the bonds. The bonds here are, this is just uh, basically a harmonic oscillator, so we can Think of it like uh, we have uh, our atom, which is represented as a bow, and it is uh, connected uh, to a spring. So it, if it goes uh, too, too away from the, from the other atom, it goes back uh, through this uh, potential. This is given by the first term. The second term is the angle bending term, which is, uh, of course, uh, between uh, three units, uh, three atoms to define uh, uh, one angle. 
The next uh, term is uh, the so-called tor torsion potential, which is basically a rotation between, uh, yeah, between two groups, a uh, rotation around a bond. And uh, the last two terms are the Coulomb potential. You are familiar very much with it. And uh, the Leonard jones potential, which uh, is calculating the Van der Waals interactions between uh, the atoms. So at the end, basically, uh, the force field is uh, just a set of uh, numbers and we, we are, where we are having uh, some parameters which uh, we need to, to define as, for example, this uh, <coughs> force const constants that we have to define and which are defining uh, our force field uh, for the molecules uh, that we are interested of. But uh, all of these things are included, so we, we're going to see them uh, later, <coughs> second thing is the statistical ensemble. Basically, we have uh, we are working. Uh, the main ensembles in uh, molecular simulations are the microcanonical ensemble, where we have uh, the number of particles, volume, and energy are held constant. The canonical ensemble, uh, we have number of particles, volume, and temperature. Isothermal, isobaric number of particles, pressure, and temperature are held constant. And the ground canonical, where we have the <coughs> uh, chemical potential, the volume, and uh, the temperature. This is, uh, <coughs> you can think of this like uh, as of experiment. Actually, a molecular dynamic simulation is just a lot of like uh, experiment. So the, for example, the microcanonical ensemble, if we have our beaker with our solution and uh, what everything is uh, going on inside, our beaker is uh, <coughs> sealed in a one sealed container, which uh <coughs> so uh, our system cannot exchange energy with uh, the surroundings and also cannot change the volume and the number of particles, of course. The canonical ensemble is given by the kind of the second beaker where we have removed the, this container so the energy can be uh, exchange with the surroundings uh, and uh, the, also the isothermal isobaric is where we can change also the volume of our system. And in the current canonical, in general, we can uh, change the number of uh, particles uh, for during the simulation. Uh, what I the most used uh, ensembles are the canonical and the isothermal isobaric, I would say. Uh, how you you have to choose the, the ensemble is basically basically it depends on what you want to simulate and what you want to study uh, and also if for example if uh, you, you want to usually you want to so uh, you want to compare the data you derive uh, to experiments so you need to be uh, also consistent with the experimental setup I mean in the, in the sense that for example most of the experiments are performed at uh, <coughs> And one bar and uh, the pressure is constant. So for example, we want uh, to keep the NPT ensemble and uh, so on. <coughs> uh, so uh, and so I would like to say a few more things about Gromax. Uh, this is the simulation package that uh, we are going, uh, which I'm going to use and which I'm using for the last five, six years, I don't remember anymore. I started using it during, during my master studies. I actually, yeah, I didn't have any prior knowledge before that to MD, so uh, I started using Gromax. I liked it and I'm still, st still using it. It's uh, free, so you, this is very <laughs> quite good advantage. Uh, also, it's uh, constant de developing uh, all around the world, uh, so it's new things are coming. Uh, yeah, quite uh, often. It's very well documented. You can you can find uh, all kind of tutorials and uh, everything. Uh, all the parameters, everything is is there. So there is a lot of forums that you can find uh, <coughs> information about. So in this uh, sense, it's uh, very also nice. Also, it's one of the fastest molecular dynamics uh, codes. Nowadays, and I would say it is also user friendly compared to maybe other uh, packages, but uh, yeah, you can judge for yourself uh, from the example. Uh, there is uh, 
how you can install Gromox. Uh, on Linux, it's very simple. You can just type in this command and it's going to be installed. installed. Uh, also, you can, you can download it and uh, install it from uh, manually. But this is not so user friendly, so it's going to take some time. But uh, you can do. Uh, you have more freedom of uh, to choose which components to install and how to do the installation and uh, everything. So it's also okay. Uh, for Windows, uh, I haven't done it, so I don't know. I know that you can install it, but I haven't done it. So if you if you try to install it, let me let me know how it goes and how it's running. Uh, I guess for for Mac is the same as Linux. So. Uh, also, during the example, I'm going to use some uh, visualization packages. So, I mean, you need you need to see what what you are doing uh, and how to build your system and everything how it looks like. So, I'm going to use the Avogadro and uh, also Visual Molecular Dynamics or VMD, which is uh, most popular name. <coughs> Uh, how we can <coughs> so the this is the basic flow of uh, how basically you run a MD simulation. Uh, as I said already, it's uh, much like uh, of uh, doing experiment in the laboratory. So it's a computer experiment, of course, uh, in this sense. But uh, you first start by preparing your system. So you in the laboratory you take all of your components, uh, you mix them, and uh, <coughs> Uh, doing solutions and uh, so on. Now uh, here we are preparing our systems. Uh, we run uh, energy minimization, <laughs> which uh, sometimes you can you can skip it, but uh, usually it's a good practice to to do it. After uh, after this, uh, we are doing a equilibration run. In the laboratory, we usually yeah usually do s you when you prepare your system, you let it equilibrate and to relax. Uh, for uh, some time, so it's pretty similar. After that, uh, we are doing the production run, which is uh, yeah, where we are cal calculating our trajectories and everything. And afterwards, we perform some analysis on the basically on these trajectories and derive some things that we want to wanted to calculate. Here on the right, we have uh, basically yeah, these are the commands that we are going to do. For every step, uh, <coughs> they are yeah they are basically given also in the papers over there, so you can see them. There, there are of course some files that you need in Gromax, and this is the complete list which I have uh, taken from the their web page. Uh, <coughs> this is the complete list of, uh, list of files which are either input or output files. Basically, most of them yeah are uh, com just a text files which serves as an input to run your simulation. But of course, we are not going to talk about all of them. <laughs> so we basically, uh, the ones that you always need is the configuration file, which is uh, basically given the coordinates uh, and the structure of your system, of your molecules and uh, everything. The molecule topology. Uh, and uh, also the param uh, we have also molecule and uh, system topology. There are two topology files which are giving what uh, what is happening in the system, what uh, what the system is made of. And uh, we have the parameter file which is with extension MDP, which is uh, giving all the options and uh, everything that uh, Gromax needs to know that you want to do. And uh, yeah, I want to go just a little bit uh, into the files. And to explain explain them, first the geometry file. <coughs> uh, Gromax uses a .grow file, which is the default uh, geometry file in the uh, which Gromax uses. But also we can use a PDB. It's in a different color because it's not PDB file is uh, just a structure file. It's not uh, native to to Gromax, but it can be used also. You also can use XYZ file files as well. <coughs> But these ones are the two most common, and uh, we are going to create a PDB file later, so you you gonna see it. <coughs> uh, this is how the grow file it looks like. 
uh, for example, so we have uh, at, the, at the top, I don't know if you can see from the from over there, but uh, on the top we have uh, the name of our system, we have the number of atoms coming on the second line, and after that basically we have uh, <coughs> the index and the name of the residue. The residue is basically the molecules or the different parts of the molecules, it depends how you define say, your system and your molecules. Uh, after that we have the atom name and atom numbers, and uh, the, on the last three columns you have the atomic uh, coordinates, where you, you can also have uh, like uh, velocities over here in the growth file, but not in this case. So here, I mean, this is very large file consisting of a lot of lines. So I just have cut it over here and uh, shown the top uh, bottom, the bottom part of the file. At the bottom, after all the molecules, uh, the solvent uh, and everything, we have uh, three numbers which are representing the box dimensions. So this is the basic structure of, uh, of a growth file <coughs> that uh, you need to know. <coughs> the next uh, files are the topology files. This is the dot top file and uh, the dot ITP file. The dot top file is the system topology where you have uh, basically all of these are, as I said, uh, text files. So in the, uh, on the top, uh, you, have, um, you have to include some files from the distribution of Gromax. These files are, uh, they are coming with the distribution, so they are uh, inside Gromax, and, but you just have to define them. They are the force field uh, parameters. Uh, the next one, for example, is the force field for the solvent molecules for the water in this case. Ions ITP also is coming with the distribution. This is uh, yeah, the force field for the ions. And uh, the last one, we are going to create it uh, uh, now, which is basically uh, just a molecule that we are going to simulate. After that, we have uh, yeah, just uh, the next lines are just uh, the system. Uh, everything which uh, starts, starts with uh, semicolon is a, is a command, so the program is not going to, to read it. And we, uh, this is the name of the system. At the bottom, uh, we have uh, the number of uh, molecules, which are, yeah, uh, how many molecules we have in uh, our system. So this is the basic uh, top file. Uh, on the other hand, you have the ITP file, which basically gives uh, how, how the atoms are connected in the molecule. And also, so again, we have the molecule type, uh, the residue, how it is called, this residue, the name of this residue, this is, uh, this is how I'm going to visualize it uh, into VMD afterwards, but I'm uh, going to tell about this uh, later. So we have uh, how, how our, the list of uh, the, our atoms in our molecule, and we have the force field for, yeah, for every different kind. On the, on the bottom we have uh, the bonds, so the bonds between uh, every pair of uh, atom the angles, the hydros, and so on towards uh, the end. But I'm going to show these files also uh, to better resolution a bit later. Uh, also, the last file that uh, we, we need to know is the MDP file. This is the, all the MD parameters that you need uh, to pass to the program in order to run your simulation. On the top, we have the, just the title of the simulation, uh, some two lines which are usually, they should be there, there are uh, some parameters which are yeah, uh, done when you're installing Gromax, so this is the libraries and everything. Uh, the run control parameters, you have the integrator, which tells us uh, that we want to run an MD simulation. Uh, the default value is the leapfrog integrator. We have the time step, which is given in uh, picoseconds. So this is uh, one femtosecond in this case, the number of steps, and uh, the total time in uh, total physical time is given when you just multiply those two values. Uh, here we have uh, some output uh, control parameters where you have to basically tell how often the program to write your coordinates to the outputs uh, or velocity, forces, energies uh, to the lock and the energy file. Also, some the precision and uh, <coughs> frequency of uh, how they are writing to some other uh, files. For example, this XTC file. 
this file also goes, uh, it has uh, many more lines and uh, more parameters. Uh, the next one is uh, how <coughs> the neighbor search works. So for example, we use a Verlay scheme and uh, all the, yeah, the <coughs> things are given in the, in the file. Uh, we have also, at the bottom, we have uh, also the commands which are specifying how the electrostatics are defined, uh, for example, and uh, all the cutoffs for the electrostatic and the van der Waals interactions, all the barrel stats and the thermostats that are controlling the different ensembles are also given here, which uh, we are going to see <coughs> uh, in a minute. So, uh, I would like to, yeah, just to do a short simulation. If you want, you can uh, try it for yourself uh, later or now. First, uh, I want to create uh, my molecule. In this case, uh, I'm going to use uh, uh, the package called Avogadro. This is quite nice visualization package that also can do some, uh, yeah, some other stuff. For example, you can build your molecule. This is how what we are going to do now. We are going to build, insert. There is a few options. You can create a DNA molecule. You can insert different fragments. Also, if you have the smiles code of your system of your, your molecule, you can do it or you can build a peptide. For example, I'm going to. <coughs> Built a carboxylic acid molecule. So uh, this fragment insertion is uh, this is coming with Avogadro. So it's uh, this is the standard library. So you can find uh, a lot of uh, molecules here. I'm going to use this uh, propanoic uh, acid molecule. You can see it. So first thing, uh, yeah, I want uh, to simulate a charge uh, anion. So. First, I'm going to deprotonate the molecule just by raising the hydrogen. Uh, also, I want uh, the number of uh, atoms, the indexes, to be different. So I'm going to change them. For example, I want uh, this uh, carbon to be first. So I'm going to put it uh, on the top here. Uh, second, I want uh, to be this uh, C5 uh, carbon, which is on the third place, actually. And uh, after that, this one. So at the end, uh, I want my last molecules, the, the last atoms, to be the hydrogen atoms from the methyl group. So we can just uh, hit apply and we can see what. How do you define the, the order of the, the uh, you, you just uh, basically, when you go to the Cartesian editor, you just uh, basically open this window. So, and you see, you see the number, you see the number of uh, the indexes uh, over here. They correspond to this number here. And so you just move them up and down in, the, in this uh, text editor here. So this, yeah, one way to do it with, yeah, in this case. Uh, of course, there you can do it in other ways, but this is one convenient way. So I'm happy with uh, the order now. So I'm going to just save it. I'm going to call it prop.pdb. So I have uh, my uh, structure file, which is called prop uh, PDB. Uh, so now I want uh, to be able to <coughs> go inside this file and to see how it looks like. This is just the bas basic uh, PDB file. For example, I, I also want uh, this residual name to be called uh, in a different way. So I'm going to... <coughs> change uh, the name of uh, this residue, which is, uh, can be, I'm using uh, also VI, which is uh, just the text editor in uh, Linux. It's uh, very convenient, it's very easy to use. 
Uh, so this is, I just uh, changed the name of uh, my residual and I am going to save and uh, quit from uh, this file. Now I want to to build the topology files uh, for for my system. And this uh, I'm going to use, first I'm going to use the OPOS uh, force field and uh, for there is one very good tool called uh, Topogen, Topogen that, uh, which is not coming with the distribution of uh, Gromax, but you can download it uh, on their web page. So this is uh, just a basic Perl script, which uh, reads a PDB file and uh, creates a topology for Gromax. And it is, it is uh, run like that. There is a minus F option, which is uh, input, which you give your PDB file. On the minus out, so you give uh, prop your output file, which is going to be called like that. Also, you can specify the type of the file, which in this case is going to be uh, ITP. So when I'm run, running the program. So first, uh, it tells a warning that the net charge of the molecule is uh, not zero. Of course, that we deprotonated it, so it's a minus, almost minus one. Uh, and uh, of course, this program is not perfect, so you, you have to go inside and to check uh, all the uh, all the if if it has the right parameters. It, in most of the cases, of course, it has them. So, but uh, you have to double check for yourself, of course. So I'm again uh, going to see this file that I that I have created. Okay. So this is the topology file of the molecule, where we have uh, the force field uh, <coughs> type of uh, parameters, uh, the residual name, atoms, charge, masses, and we have the bonds, angles, dihedros, and improper dihedros in this case. They are just a uh, yeah, bunch of lies in this file. So for example, I know that uh, this uh, atom number four should be should be with uh, should be a different uh, OPLS uh, <coughs> name. It should be 274. I have checked, so I know that uh, this is the right one. And uh, I am also going to remove. So when I when I'm changing this uh, file, this atom to something else, uh, most likely the charge is not gonna be is not gonna be the same because I have changed the type of the atom. So just in case, I am going to erase the charge and uh, the mass column. Uh, when you erase these uh, two columns, the program is going to go into the distribution, so it's going to find all the charges and the masses. You also can give it here, but it's not uh, necessary, so it is uh, okay to do so. <coughs> so now I have created uh, my topology and uh, the structure file, which I'm going to just move to another folder. <coughs> so here now I am going to start uh, building uh, our uh, our system. First, I want uh, to insert uh, some molecules, the molecules that uh, the molecule that I just uh, built with uh, the following uh, command. Uh, GMX insert molecule. Since uh, Gromax 5, there is a bit change of how you run Gromax, and this is done by always you run GMX before that. And insert molecule is a program part of Gromax which inserts molecules, <laughs> basically. Uh, you have all the commands, so we can give the input uh, file which we just uh, created. The we can give uh, some. Um, output, which is uh, with extension .grow. I want to put uh, 12 molecules in our system and uh, to build a box with dimensions 4 by 4 by 4. Also, it's not necessary, but you can give uh, a random seed for the random number generator, so your system is going to be uh, yeah, if you give just a random number, your system is going to create uh, this uh, insert molecule is going to create a different uh, initial configuration. So I am running this. <coughs> and I have uh, created, yes, uh, our 
system. I want to visualize what I have uh, created now by uh, this uh, tool I, I told you about, uh, uh, VMD, which is run just basically like that. So we have uh, the box of our molecules. And I can just visualize to draw the line. So, so this is how the initial box looks like. This is just to see how, yeah, it's always good to check if everything looks OK. Afterwards, I want uh, to solvate our molecules, of course. Uh, it's not going to be we want to run them uh, in a solvent. This is done by the tool called uh, Solvate. On the CP option, you give the, <coughs> the file that we just created, which is called box acid. On the minus uh, C, CS option, you give the name of the solvent that you want to use. In this case, I want to use water. And the force field for this uh, water is tip 4 p and uh, on the O, which is the output, you have, uh, yeah, you can name your file however you want. Uh, also, you have uh, this uh, the other topolo topology called topol.top. This is the system topology, which I'm going to show you in a second. So we have built uh, our, our system. We see that uh, we have this volume, this density, and uh, the number of uh, solvent molecules which are inserted in the system. I want to show you this uh, file to pull that top. So this is yeah, this is the system that we have. We have this uh, 12 uh, acid molecules and uh, 2,000 and something uh, solvent molecules. This is how it looks like. Uh, <coughs> so I wa also want to show you the what we have built so far. Uh, box. That grow is the one that we just did. So this is uh, our system. So I want to visualize differently the, the acid molecules because you, it's very hard to see them inside this box of, uh, of uh, solvent. So first, uh, so I'm going to do this by giving this uh, typing rest name and uh, giving the name of the residual that I just created and uh, name that how I wanted. So we can visualize differently your molecules. So this is the box with the solvent that we just uh, created. Of course, uh, this, uh, <coughs> this box uh, and these molecules are charged. So we need. Um, so we need uh, some uh, ions to counter to balance the ions because we cannot uh, charge uh, we cannot run a md simulation which is charged so um, this is done by the following commands first uh, we have uh, the tool called uh, grom pp this is the basic um, <coughs> tool that collects all the atoms uh, the atom uh, sorry all the text files all the input files and creates one output file which is uh, needed in order uh, Gromax uh, to be run. So we are going to use this one uh, quite often from now. So we have uh, our ions MDP. First, let me show this. Uh, this is the uh, MDP file that we are going to use. But this one is not so interested. So we are going to see the other ones uh, later. So we have uh, on the minus F, uh, this is output uh, option. We are going to pass our MDP file. On the <coughs> minus P, we have to pass our topology file, which is in this case is both uh, input and output file, because uh, we are going to add some counter ions, which counter ions are going to be automatically written to this uh, topo top file so we are not going to change we are not going to work inside the file anymore so the program is going to do it for us and uh, we are going to uh, give output file which are going to be named tpr file this tpr file is used by gromax to the simulations to the simulation to be run so when we just uh, sorry and of course, 
Sometimes uh, Gromax uh, gives you a warning when it finds some error. Uh, I forgot, of course, to pass uh, our configuration file, which is this uh, box.grow that uh, we have created already. And uh, now we have uh, created this uh, ions TPR file. So now we are going to, to generate some uh, ions, which is done by, by the tool called GenION. Uh, on this, uh, you pass on the minus S, uh, you have uh, ions TPR. The minus uh, P, you have the tuple, that's top. On minus uh, O, you have a box, ions, let's say, call it like that, that grow. And uh, we want the, this, the option pin name is the name of the atoms that we want uh, to create. In this uh, case, I want to create uh, calcium. And uh, the final option is NP, which is the number of uh, atoms. So I have uh, 12 molecules which are with charge minus one, and the uh, calcium is minus two. So first I'm going to create uh, three calcium atoms, which is done by that. So, and when you run the program, uh, you have a few options from which you can choose. And you have to choose uh, which molecules to be to be replaced by some by the atoms. In this case, we want some of the water molecules to be replaced, which is uh, the group called Sol. So we just hit 13 and uh, run the run it again. <coughs> but uh, to balance the charge, I have to insert some uh, more, yeah, a bit uh, more atoms. So I want uh, also I I'm going to do this uh, again. Box ions. I want uh, also to put some magnesium ions. So I'm going basically to create again, uh, to repeat the same thing uh, once more. And, uh, but I have to call just differently the output. And I want to create magnesium at uh, counter ions, which also are with uh, charge minus two. So I need uh, three more. Again, uh, so we see that uh, we already have calcium with uh, three atoms, and I want uh, to replace some of the solvent molecules again. So now we have uh, uh, created our, uh, our system. Let's uh, just see how it looks like. This is, uh, yeah. So I showed you, I want to visualize my molecules differently. I want also to visualize the ions, which I want to be a different color. For example, these are the calcium ions. And I also want to visualize the magnesium, which are going to be just, uh, let's say, green. So this is... Uh, this is how our system looks like. So this is the input where we can start our simulations finally. This is how we built our system. Now, we are going first to perform uh, energy minimization, but first I'm going to create just a different uh, directory which I'm going to work in. The energy minimization, I'm going to use uh, this uh, this file called uh, minim mdp the integrate the integrator is uh, we are just going to use a steepest descent this is uh, when we want to stop our simulation the number of uh, our minimization the number of steps cutoff schemes uh, for yeah for the electrostatic and van der waals equations and uh, van der waals interactions and so far so this is done by again we are create, uh, running uh, grom pp and are passing this uh, file minim, uh, the MDP file, the one that we just created, the final one. We have also the topology, topology file. And on the output, we want to create a TPR file, which are going to be used. So this is done by, so we have created our file, which is, yeah, which is called uh, EMTPR. So this file I'm going to 
just move it to the, this directory and I'm going to run it over there. We run this file by typing uh, gmx uh, md run and uh, we're going to see what's happening on the screen with the option minus v and on the, with the option minus s we have to pass our file. So this is the steps that are taken when we are minimiz uh, minimizing our doing uh, energy minimization. Uh, this is uh, good to do because in this way we are uh, trying to, to remove some bad contacts at uh, the initial configuration so our system it won't uh, going to explode. So we can, for example, we can see how our potential energy it looks like. Uh, we have uh, this uh, NR file which is uh, created from the run and we want to for example, potential. We want uh, to see how our potential energy looks like. When we run this, we, we are going to choose option 10, which is the potential energy. We hit enter twice. And uh, we can visualize uh, the potential energy as a function of the steps that we just uh, run. With, uh, I'm going to use the tool called XM Grace. So you can see that. Uh, we have our potential energy starting from some higher value, value and it's going to some equilibrium. So we can see that this is well equilibrated for now. Uh, we also have, uh, the system have created uh, this confound grow file, which we are going to use as from now on for the next steps. I'm just going to copy it to the previous folder. Okay. Now, uh, first I'm going to do a uh, NVT equilibration. For this uh, case, I'm going to create just a couple of folders. And after that, I'm going to do a NPT equilibration. Uh, okay. So the NVT equilibration, we are going to use this uh, file NVT MDP. As uh, I explained briefly some of the options here, some other very important options is how we control our temperature and our pressure. In this case, uh, where we have uh, the number of uh, particles, volume, and uh, temperature, we are going to use uh, this uh, thermostat. This is the options that we have to choose for the thermostat. And we don't want to control the pressure, so this is, uh, we are giving uh, no here. <coughs> Again, we are creating our input files. This NVD minus P on the minus S, which is also input, is this uh, configuration file that uh, we just created. And uh, on this option, the output option, we are going to create something called NVD equilibration, that's TPR. Also, I want to move this file equilibration TPR to the folder that I just created. Just a nice way to keep everything under control and to know where it is everything. And uh, now I'm going to just to run this uh, quick uh, equilibration run. Um. So this is the number, step, uh, number of steps and uh, the current step that we are at the moment. And this is when it's going to finish. So of course, this is just a 1,000 step and it's very uh, brief simulation. And it's not a real equilibration. So it's uh, for the practical purposes I'm going to show it. Show it. After that, I want uh, to use this uh, confound file which was created. and. Uh, I'm going to use this file as an input for the next uh, run. So now I want uh, to run just a quick uh, NPT equilibration between, uh, before the production run. This uh, again, we are uh, using GROM PP. We have NPT, mm, this one. We have the input file the topology and NPT equilibration that's TPR is the one that we are going to create. So 
we are going to move this uh, file again to the next directory. And uh, I'm going to run this uh, file for in order to perform this uh, NPT equilibration. This is just the normal steps. It's convenient that it tells us when the simulation is gonna finish. In this case, it's just eight seconds, which is quite fast, because it's uh, just a very small number of steps. So we are almost ready to run our production run at the end. <laughs> we have performed uh, two equilibration, one with uh, NVT and one in NPT ensemble. And in the end, I want to use uh, this uh, MDP file, which is uh, the same file as I used before. Uh, in this case, uh, I'm specifying the thermostats as before. But now I want uh, also to control the, the pressure, which in this case is controlled by the Parineo Raman barostat. There are also other options, but uh, this one is uh, quite OK. <coughs> OK. Now I want uh, also to create another directory called uh, NPT conduction. And uh, again, I am going to create. Uh, of course, uh, here I have uh, I have um, uh, more steps to perform, which are, yeah. Uh, we need a longer production run, of course. So now we have uh, again. Uh, the usual way how we pass our <coughs> commands. Okay. So I have created also this file, npt called npt production tpr. And I'm going to move it to this directory that I have created. OK, I'm going to, this is uh, the final step. I'm going to run uh, the production run now, which is uh, in the, done in the usual way, minus b, minus s. So now we have, uh, yeah, 90 something seconds. Of course, we want uh, our uh, production run to be uh, much longer compared to the previous one, of course. But uh, now I can do something else in the meantime. For example, I can <coughs> I can uh, do something. Uh, I can create uh, this uh, make uh, index file. This make index file is just a basic uh, text, text file which uh, use um, <coughs> where we can define a different number of molecules in order to perform uh, or atoms in order to perform our uh, <coughs> uh, analysis afterwards. So I'm just gonna call it uh, index. That's ndx. So you can see. You have a uh, few options here that you can uh, choose to include uh, in this uh, file. For example, I want uh, all the carbon atoms from the carboxylic uh, acid for the carboxylate group to be included uh, as a separate uh, as a separate um, uh, entry. So uh, I'm doing this by just hitting uh, A and uh, listing uh, all the atoms uh, that are. Uh, this uh, in this group okay i know that uh, and by hitting enter i have added uh, this just to a different uh, name you can if q and exit the file so i can just uh, see this index file which is basically just a just really a bunch of numbers and these uh, numbers are our atoms and our molecules 
I want uh, just to name the uh, the name of this uh, group, CO, which contains just the indexes of these uh, atoms that I want. <coughs> Uh, our production run has finished, so we can just uh, run a uh, quick uh, analysis. So we can calculate a couple of things. Now, I want this index here. So uh, I'm going to calculate uh, just the radio distribution function between uh, <coughs> the carbon atoms that I just uh, created in this uh, index file of the carboxylate group and uh, the counter ions, for example, the calcium and magnesium. This is done by the tool called uh, RDF, which is coming with Gromax. On the minus F, we have to provide the trajectory. This is the trajectory of uh, our system. Uh, this, is, this is the input file that we used uh, to run our, <coughs> um, our, uh, our simulation. And on the minus O, I, for example, I want to create, call this RDF C calcium, for example. So now I'm going to choose the two groups. Uh, this uh, RDF needs uh, two groups in order to calculate the radio distribution function. The first one is this uh, C from the, the carbon atom from the carboxylate group, which is given by the number of 22. And the second one in this case is uh, calcium, which is 20. So it's just going to be take a few moments to be calculated. Uh, also, I want uh, to calculate also the radio distribution function between the same groups, but with uh, the same group of carbon atoms and magnesium in this case. So I'm just gonna, going to repeat the same thing, but with magnesium, which in this case is uh, 19. So now I have uh, those two files called RDF, which are XVG files. I can visualize them uh, with again with this uh, XM Grace tool, which was presented on our other seminar. Uh, I want to see how these uh, radio distribution functions uh, look like, and this is uh, this is how they look like, of course. They are very noisy because, uh, yeah, they are. <coughs> this is very brief uh, production run. So the first one, the black line, is uh, the RDF between uh, the C atom of the calcium and of the carboxylate group and the calcium. And the next one is between the C and uh, magnesium. So we can say from, uh, yeah, did I do it like that? Yeah. So we can see that uh, our calcium is interacting more strongly uh, with the carboxylate group than magnesium, for example, from this uh, simple and uh, quite quick run. So with uh, this, I think it's uh, time to finish and uh, to finish this example. OK. Yep. Thank you, Alex. Thank you. Thanks for coming and uh, help yourself stick around, have a good time. Yeah. Thank you.